It's your May mortgage and housing update, and I'm gonna try to keep it to under eight minutes today. Let's see if I can do it. First off, May is Military Appreciation Month. Guaranteed rate is doing a fundraiser through the 23rd. Our original goal was half a million, already hit it, but our CEO said, oh, let's do a million. So here's what's going on. For every $10 you donate, Guaranteed Rate is donating $20 for a total of 30, benefits nine different military nonprofits. You can pick which one. And look, a lot of these nonprofits I found out about from you guys. So the Blinded Veterans Association, Operation Homefront, Operation Gratitude, Operation Healing Forces, and some of them are new nonprofits you probably haven't heard of, but are doing a lot of good. So Operation Deploy Your, your Dress, um, you've got your classic Team Red, White, and Blue, a lot of great options. So please, if you're thinking about doing any charitable giving this year, Think about doing it in the next few days because once again, every $100 you donate, guaranteed rate donates 200. And this is to benefit the men and women who are currently serving our country as well as those who have served before them. So please, please, please. Okay, mortgage rates, um, they're better. They're more like March. So if you watch the April update, March was great. April was misery because we saw rate spike. Now in May, we're back to that kind of nice March level. There's not as much volatility, which is great. So volatility is when you see the rates jump like a quarter, half a percent in 24 hours. In April, we saw a lot of drama, which was not fun. You know, we had gotten a little bit of a break from it, which as a lender, I have to tell you was appreciated because we've been dealing with this for about four years now. And for buyers, it's really, really hard. You know, we, we had a lot of buyers in April that were like, I'm never going to buy a house. And that's what you guys need to notice about this market is you can go from feeling like you're never going to be able to buy a house to the market totally improving the next month. So really important that you are comfortable, you know, with what the payment is and you just know like, okay, this market's a little wild. I'm going to stick in, you know, because the odds are it's going to go my way soon. Now, when are rates going to drop? That's what everyone wants to know. With inflation and the consumer price index reporting what you know the data that they're getting, not anytime soon. That that's the thing. I don't think we're gonna see any seismic drops. And that's what the new that's what the new forecasts are. Now they're saying, oh, you know, it looks like it's gonna be the end of the year. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't even trust that. I feel like the last few years has been a lot of ice cream tomorrow, right? Like I've been on calls where you know, companies and loan officers, and this isn't just my company, this is like my friends, everyone's planning, everyone planned for a huge refinance wave in January of this year, because everyone thought rates were gonna drop then. Didn't happen, then it was like, <gasps> March, N -n no, right? And based on the data that keeps on coming back, it's not looking super positive. So we are looking for refinance opportunities. If you're one of my clients and Linda calls you, well, she found one, <laughs> she found one. So we're actively looking at everything. We also have rate alert, that's right, um, where you can set up you know, how much you wanna save and we'll reach out when it hits that. I actually have that coming out for people who aren't our clients too. So our tech's been working on that. It's really cool, you guys are gonna love it. Um, Here's one thing I want to say to you that whether you're purchasing or refinancing, or maybe you're a real estate agent watching this, you really need to be careful right now. And I've said this before, but it's like, it's just, I'm seeing it every day, multiple times a day, because if you watch the channel, you know, we're happy to look at your loan summaries that you're getting from other lenders. If you're getting a good deal, I'll be like, thank God they're treating you well, reward them with your business. If they're giving you a bad deal, one of my team will be stepping in to say, hey, uh, we can save you six grand. I am seeing it where people are like, oh, I got this great rate, Jen. And I'm like, let me see the loan summary. And in box A, that's where you guys wanna look on these loan estimates, there's just a crazy amount of lender fees, like 10, $15,000. And we're like, hey, like, did anyone talk to you about the fact that you were buying two points or you were paying this or that? No, no. And that's the thing, like as a consumer, you're like, well, don't they have to tell you that? Here's the thing, they're giving it to you in writing. So they can always say, well, we gave it to you. You could have read it. So be very careful. Um, and if you're unsure what you're looking at, because let's be real, these are government forms. They're not super, super easy to understand. Reach out, we're happy to look at. We do not charge for this, okay? Let's make a deal though. <laughs> for the next two days, if we look at your loan summary and you feel like we give you any value whatsoever, 
please donate. Okay. How about that? How about that? Cause sometimes like, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a guy yesterday and we were able to help him negotiate with the lender he was working with and he's saving thousands and thousands of dollars, five bucks, five bucks minimum. Anyways. So look, we're happy to look at it. We do it for free. Yes. If you do it in the next two days, please donate to charity. Um, okay. So that's what's going on with mortgage rates. They're better. We're starting to look for refinance opportunities because we've, we're starting to give up hope that rates are going to drop dramatically anytime soon. Okay. Um, temporary buy downs. I'm still not a fan. We'll do another video about that later. Housing. Once again, there's no big change here. It depends on where you are in the country and it's not even state by state, it's county by county. So I always go back to New Jersey where there's certain counties that are so competitive, there's gonna be 20, 30 offers, but there's others where it's not. You know, I think of communities where there's more new homes. I, I, I think of Houston a lot, you know, Sahar, you've seen her on the channel, she's great. Sahar can find you a dream home within a week. You know why? There's inventory. So why is there inventory? There's a lot of building in Texas. That's the thing. Whether it's Houston or Dallas, you know, in Dallas, you've got Michelle who can get you in quick. There's a lot of building and that gives more options. It also puts pressure on existing homes when they hit the market, because here's the thing. If you've got a market where there's only existing homes, there's no new construction, they're just competing against each other. And there's not a lot of inventory in that segment in a lot of parts of the country because people have so what, such low rates, they don't want to sell. The new builds, if you're in one of those areas, they put pressure on the existing because of the increase in inventory. Also because of the perception that newer is better, which honestly, seriously, watch all my videos on new builds. Newer is not always better. So make sure you're researching the builder. This is going to continue. It's that simple. We're going to see inventory shortages in certain portions of the country. We're going to see other portions where they're still building and we're going to keep on seeing it go like this until we see a significant rate drop. So, you know, if you're thinking the housing market's going to crash, I, I still don't see that happening. And it's pretty funny because a couple of years ago, there were a lot of people saying, oh, it's going to crash in six months. They love to troll me on my channel, but they never come back to admit they're wrong. Once again, the bulk of the country still has an inventory issue. As long as there is an inventory issue, the housing market will not crash. It's a simple supply versus demand. And sometimes people go, well, no one can afford these houses. No one you know, right? You've got people moving from other states. There's a lot of relocation coming around the country right now where you know, I'm seeing towns where the average price is two to 300,000 going up. And it's because people got pushed out of higher cost states. You know, you've got that going on. You also have overseas investors. Like that is a real thing. Like Florida, where I am, that's a real thing. The only potential crash I see, and I warn everybody about this, is there is like Florida condo market. Would I be rushing into the Florida condo market? Absolutely not. That is where you're going to see problems. And that is not a supply issue. It's not a demand issue. It's a deferred maintenance issue. And it's basically like the bill has come due on these condos because of the Surfside collapse. So many of them are not prepared. So that is where I do see potential issues, but single family homes. Yeah, no condos approach with caution because so many of the condo buildings, and it's not just isolated to Florida, it's across the country. They're not prepared for the new requirements after that Surfside collapse. They haven't been collecting enough money. They haven't been doing their maintenance. So that's the one area I've been worried about for a while. If you watch my videos, I've brought it up before. So, oh, I think I was over eight minutes. I'm sorry, guys. Thanks for watching once again. Come on. They take care of us every day. I think people don't realize this, but like Literally, there are men and women around the country working 24 hours a day to make sure that when we sleep, we don't have to worry about a bomb. So please, please, please donate. Um, it's a great cause. Thanks for watching.